Hello students, Miss Watson here, and today we're going to learn about the digestive system. Now I picked this cute little picture here because it does show most of the different organs that are involved in digestion. So we have a few learning goals here today. You should be able to describe the role of the digestive system, and you should be able to list and describe the organs of the digestive system. So first of all, what's the purpose or what's the role of the digestive system? Well, it takes in nutrients and excretes or gets rid of the remaining waste, and that's required to give your body energy. And you can see in this picture here, there's a whole lot of details about what happens with the different enzymes digesting different types of foods. Um, we're not going to learn about that in this course, but if you take biology next year, you'll learn all about the different specific enzymes and what they break down and how protein is breaking down, broken down versus uh, fats or versus carbohydrates and so on. So here are all the different parts of the digestive system. First we'll go through all the parts where the food travels and then we'll look, take a look at the accessory organs, which are organs that help digestion, but food doesn't actually travel through those organs. So digestion starts off in the mouth where you take in the food. Um, when you start eating, you'll be chewing, and that starts breaking down the food into smaller and smaller pieces, which helps it pass through um, your throat. Now, also when you're chewing, saliva from your salivary glands is getting mixed in with the food, so that helps lubricate it to make it easier to digest or easier to move through the system. Also, your salivary glands have some enzymes, which start the digestion a little bit already in your mouth. Then the food passes through your esophagus, which travels down um, next to your windpipe. So it's not the same thing as what you breathe through. It's a separate pipe. So it travels through your esophagus, through your throat. And the esophagus actually has something special called peristaltic contractions, which means it actually takes the food and squeezes it off or pinches it off and squishes it down your esophagus. So it's not just gravity that's having the food come down your throat, but it's actually being pushed down using muscles to push that food down into your stomach. So if you wanted to, you could stand on your hands doing a handstand and eat you know, a sandwich and the food would still make it from your mouth to your stomach, even if you're upside down and your stomach is above your head. So after it moves from your esophagus, it goes into your stomach. And inside of your stomach, there are all sorts of uh, enzymes as well as really, really acidic conditions that help break down the food. In addition to that, your stomach churns the food, so the, the stomach is a very muscular organ, and it helps squishes the food around, which helps break it up into pieces. So the stomach is involved in digestion, and it does that two ways, chemically with enzymes and acid, and mechanically, so the muscles that churn the food. After that, it moves into the small intestine, so that's in purple there. So in the small intestines, your body starts absorbing the nutrients from the food. It also absorbs some of the water and the nutrients. So this is important for us to actually get the, um, the, the nutritious value out of the food that we're eating, because so far in the digestive system, all we've done is break down the food, but we need to start absorbing those nutrients. After the small intestine, it moves into the large intestine. More water is absorbed in the large intestine as well as some of the ions in the food that we're eating. After the large intestine, it moves to the rectum where the feces are stored, and then the feces are expelled through the anus. Now that's all of the parts where the, the food actually passes. What about the organs that help things out? We'll start off with the liver, which is in green there. The liver has a bunch of different roles um, after digestion where blood passes through and it helps get rid of uh, toxins, it helps get rid of um, bad blood cells, and it does a number of roles. But in terms of the actual digestion, one of the main things that it does is produce bile, which is important to help break down the food. Now, right next to the liver is the gallbladder, and the gallbladder stores all of that bile before it gets put into the stomach for digestion to occur. So, or should, stomach and sort of the, the beginning of the small intestine. So this is where the bile is stored in the gallbladder. Now, another accessory organ there uh, is in blue there, and that's the pancreas. And you may have heard about the pancreas in terms of producing insulin. It also produces some other enzymes, but it does produce insulin, which helps regulate the glucose level in the bloodstream. And it produces enzymes, which go into the digestion as well to help break down that food. 
So let's take a look at the tissues of the um, digestive system. So in the esophagus, it has um, very sort of thin um, um, epithelial tissue, but it has a very thick layer of muscle down at the bottom of the picture there. So that allows the, the food to get pushed through. In the stomach, there's a very, very thick layer of epithelial tissue, which is to protect the stomach from the acid that it produces. It also has special cells that secrete mucus to protect the stomach from the acid. The small intestine has these projections, they almost look a little bit like fingers, and then coming off of each of those, although you can't see it in this picture, you'd need a microscope, there are projections that come off of those, and that is just to increase the surface area, and that helps uh, absorb more nutrients out of the food. And then finally, the large intestine has relatively uh, thick layer of epithelial tissue, and it has specialized cells to help absorb the water. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you describe the role of the digestive system? And can you list and describe the organs of the digestive system? If you can do these things, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.